All right, we're live. Good morning to all you GCP online meetupers out there, and welcome. Uh, my name is Anthony Bichon, and I'm a customer engineer here at Google. I'm joined today by Jonathan Cham, a fellow host, and we're going to be listening to Deanna Rowe today, a customer engineer who will be talking about BigQuery for AdWords and DoubleClick. So I think we're all excited, um, not only for the presentation, but because I just named everyone who's listening, GCP online meetupers. It's pretty catchy. Yeah, there's only about three of us listening right now, which is me, you, and Deanna. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a really good time because I know at least Anthony and I will learn a lot and Deanna will improve her presentation skills, of course. Jonathan, you're just a little bit quiet. Uh, but no big worry there. No, nope. thank you for letting me know. Is that a little bit better? Sure. <laughs> uh see what's up in the chat. Let us know that you're watching. Um, we do uh, field questions, so again, uh, please feel free to ask away. Um, this is meant to be casual, you know, keep it cash and, and interactive. So, um, Deanna, we are excited to hear what you have for us today. Uh, so thank you from, uh, for, for joining us from uh, Chicago, sunny Chicago, I assume right now. It's June, like winter's got to be over, right? Uh, almost. That's a little bit, um, but <laughs> we're working on it. It has been nice out lately. But, awesome. Yeah, so, hi, I'm Deanna. I'm a customer engineer based in Chicago, um, and I've worked quite a bit with the ads teams on um, helping establish the go-to-market plan between our ads technologies and BigQuery, so we can get going. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah. Well, uh, so essentially, um, what we realized was that there's obviously a big problem out there for getting all of your data in a spot that you can analyze. Um, so a lot of companies have created an enterprise data warehouse um, where they dump a bunch of data in or potentially call it a data lake. I've heard some clients call it a data swamp, which, uh, I don't know, scared me away a little bit. But uh, there's a, an interest in analyzing data and collecting it all, aggregating it in one spot. Uh, so here you can see several different Google Ads products uh, being Analytics 360, ads, or AdWords, um, DoubleClick for Publishers, and DoubleClick Bid Manager. Um, YouTube as well is listed there because there is a lot of advertising done on YouTube. But then there are also technologies listed at the bottom that are not um, Google proprietary. So Facebook being a great example of that, um, where you still want to analyze uh, the advertising that you're doing there. And essentially, the whole idea here is that you can dump that all into BigQuery. Uh, so BigQuery, which I imagine uh, maybe not everyone knows what it is, um, is a fully managed uh, serverless data warehouse. So what that means is that you don't have to spin up any kind of infrastructure on the back end. You just get to store your data in BigQuery and then query against it. Um, and the way that the pricing model is built out for it actually splits um, storage from compute so that you um, are only you're, you can scale it at different methods um, for whatever your growth is. It also is freaky fast. And, and I'm glad that uh, we, we don't have data swamp on that slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no more data swamp, hopefully. I imagine like a nice data filing cabinet or something like that, but no swamp. <laughs> um, anyway, so you do get to use, sorry, what was that? Oh, I was just gonna say, BigQuery is the one where you literally just point the data to where you want to query, and then you press the button, right? So that's serverless. Yep. Well, zero provisioning, zero compute engine. Yep. So sorry, I think you're you're breaking up in a little echoey there. But what you were saying is that you um, you don't have to set anything up, and there's no provisioning of the infrastructure, so that you're able to just point and store your data, and then start to query against it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Woohoo. Uh, so anyway, you're able to use um, convenient SQL that I'm sure you already know if you're any kind of analyst. Um, and we do offer a free tier for it as well, mentioned there at the bottom. So essentially, you could get out there and start testing and experiencing a big query for yourself um, without having to incur a cost right away. Also, Jonathan and, and Anthony, if there are questions, feel free to stop me as I'm going along here. Will do. And uh, one thing I do want to call out too, it is it is fairly recent. I think that a few, 
you know, some people would have sticking points, I think, with the BigQuery of old uh, because it used its own um, variation of SQL. But I do want to say that I think we are, um, it's ANSI SQL now, uh, 2011. So that is something that, again, if, if you looked at BigQuery a couple years ago for this enterprise data warehouse, maybe that was a challenge. And, uh, you know, we heard you and that is, uh, you know, we addressed that. So I did want to point that out. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I think we had um, migrated or announced the new version of that last fall, correct? Or sometime around yep. that? Yeah, great. Uh, and it, it does also, it is worth noting that um, as you scale out, we've also seen a lot of companies have issues with, um, since you do pay for uh, a query based on how much data is scanned, um, that they had a little bit of hesitation before asking um, their queries and, and running that against the data because they didn't want a bill that just ran rampant, um, which might be approaching again kind of that data or yeah data swamp idea. Um, so we did listen to that as well, and there is a um, unlimited tier uh, we call it flat rate um, for BigQuery as well. But just worth noting. So we are listening to your feedback. <laughs> Uh, moving forward though, so the data transfer service, which is essentially what we're uh, going to be showing here in, in the demo, um, allows you to combine both of the ad products that Google um, owns that I mentioned in the beginning and dump that data into BigQuery. So the, the pretense of the story here for the demo is that there's a retail company named Handy Company um, that's like a home improvement store, right, with an online presence. Uh, they have a problem of wanting to understand uh, what's going on with their sales and their marketing campaigns uh, to better address why their sales are going down in California. Uh, so currently with, uh, with their advertising solutions, here they have both AdWords and DoubleClick uh, for campaign managers. Uh, the problem is that all of these data points are, are in separate silos. Um, they also have a CRM system somewhere and a bunch of sales, sales data stored, but it's all very separate and hard to correlate uh, who spent what, when, and if that actually related back to any kind of advertisement um, that HandyCo had, had uh, issued. Um, so this product here, the data transfer service, um, essentially allows you to combine several of those different uh, advertising products so that you can query against that data all in one spot. Um, in terms of loading CRM or sales data, we do have partnerships with a variety of different ETL tools um, to allow you to import that data as well into BigQuery. Um, so that would give you that holistic view of what's happening with your marketing um, and how that's impacting sales or your customer relations. Pause here for questions. Any comments? Deanna, so what are most customers doing with this data? I mean, obviously just uncovering you know, something meaningful, but from a business standpoint, are they trying to maybe do better targeting? Exactly. Yep. They're, um, they, with AdWords, for example, and with DCM, uh, you currently get a, a, a file that has the impressions, clicks, and conversion rate. Um, but it's really kind of difficult to understand uh, and correlate that back to business logic. So a lot of these customers are using that, those files to understand um, at a deeper level exactly what's happening with their marketing campaigns. Um, many of them then go on to create dashboards, which I'll show you later on with Data Studio. Um, but they can, you know, I mean, you can create that with anything like Tableau or Looker or anything like that, um, which we have an extensive ecosystem of partners there for BigQuery. Uh, but yeah, and then they share those dashboards out with the um, decision leaders and makers within their companies um, to make better and more informed decisions on marketing. Cool. I guess at a very high level, the benefit is being able to combine a lot of data from different sources and um, basically do some cross analysis to find the best way to target your customers, uh, as opposed to the default way, which is just um, that one single source when you log into your console or AdWords console. Yep. Exactly. Thanks for clarifying. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I don't know anything about ads, so I had yeah. to ask the stupid questions. Maybe we should have had a different host. <laughs> I'm walking out right now. <laughs> Catch you later. No. Uh, and, it, and this is a good point, too, as well. Both of the, um, if you are a current ads customer of Google, which is really what this product is, um, is aiming, um, you do work with both your ads team and the cloud team uh, because 
our ads team here at Google really understands conversion rates and click-through rates, impressions, all of that different ads data that you uh, get in the log files. Um, whereas the cloud team, Jonathan and Anthony and myself, um, understand BigQuery, for example, much more in depth. Um, so it's a good partnership between our two teams to help bring uh, value to, to you, to our clients. I think that one, you know, at least for some of the couple customers that I've worked with, a lot of the times as they grow in size and probably spend a lot more in ads, you'll find that some of these departments, let's say someone who's focused on um, deriving data from their marketing department, they're siloed off from the people who are spinning up infrastructure for, let's say, some type of Teradata warehouse, uh, yeah. Teradata um, or enterprise data warehouse. And I feel like, and this is just an assumption, but I feel like it makes things a little bit slower as far as getting meaningful things that you can take action on out of the data. But I think, you know, and you'll, you'll probably show this in the demo way better than I can speak to it. But, you know, if, if you're able to enable the marketing team to be able to get some of these, um, I guess, first touch insights through an IT department, I think it's pretty cool. <clears throat> Yeah, it really, uh, this really does enable the marketing team to be able to answer their own questions, uh, which I think everyone would ultimately like to be able to do. Uh, I'm sure that that you still need to rely, if you are a marketing team, rely on, on, on an IT team for certain requests and certain use cases, but uh, this takes a, a decent chunk of that work um, off of IT and allows you to move forward at the pace that suits you. I think so. One other anecdote is I know, you know, some marketing teams are a little more technical. They're able to write their own SQL queries. So it really enables them to have more power and control over the data. There's a lot of other actually partners we have that actually write, you know, call them shimmies on top of BigQuery to make it super easy where you can just kind of point and click, uh, do some drag and drop, all GUI based to search through the data. And I'll post some of that on, on the chat. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I will show you as well, here's kind of the greater um, outlook of how we were able to bring the data into BigQuery as well as other external data um, through those partners there. And then any kind of visualization that you could do on top of um, the BigQuery uh, queries that you're running there. Um, but to your point, we do also have a ETL tool um, called Data Prep that I'll show as well um, that allows you to transform the, the data within BigQuery. Um, so it's, yeah, anyway, I'll show that when we get to that point, but uh, I wanted to bring it up because that does also allow um, the marketing team, for example, who might not, might not be writing Python scripts normally or R or anything like that, um, but you certainly can understand and navigate a UI. Uh, so data prep is a, a very simple way to start to manipulate the data, um, which is an exciting part of the demo. I believe we announced that at, um, at Next in, in the beginning of March. Cool. So any other comments from my, uh, my co-hosts? Otherwise, I'll switch over. We're excited to see what you yeah, get, get to the demo. Ooh, pressure's on. Office architecture. <laughs> cool. So this is the GCP console. Uh, I'm just going to assume, I'll fly through this part and assume that you all have seen it before, or perhaps know how to get here, but um, I'm logged in already. I'm in my project. Um, here's our homepage that has different, you know, different dashboarding stuff so that I can quickly glance at what's going on with my project. Um, to get to BigQuery, you click on the hamburger on the menu, um, and you can navigate around here to find BigQuery. Um, if you don't know before, you can pin different icons up to the top, but Anyway, so I already have that open uh, over here, and I'll show you, I was poking around in it earlier, um, how to create a transfer. So if we go to transfers over here, um, and there is, uh, maybe Jonathan, I'll share with you later so you can post in the chat the documentation on how to get started in this, but normally with BigQuery, this option transfers won't be here. Um, so we have to go through and whitelist your project for access to um, to get these files from AdWords, for example, or from DCM to be able to be dumped into BigQuery for you. After being whitelist or whitelisted for that, then you'll see transfers here. So just important to note. Uh, but anyway, you could go through and then add a transfer from any of our supported uh, sources. So here today we're going to show DCM. Um, kind of dive into that a little bit more, but um, you'd be able to choose where you want it to go. So the actual um, 
data set folder that I want it to be dumped in, and then both the name for it and the GCS bucket that um, it's coming from. So just a little bit of background. With, um, with each of these ads uh, partnerships that we have built here at Google, um, it'll dump it, your data first into a GCS bucket, and then that'll copy up into BigQuery. Um, so you would pull the GCS bucket there, Google Cloud Storage, sorry, um, in order for that to come into your BigQuery uh, project. And then you'll, you'll also need to provide your double-click ID. So some of these things are a little bit um, focused on, on the actual advertising solution that you're using. But um, anyway, so I already have the data loaded over here, so I'm not going to go through and, and do that. Um, we've cleaned the data here and, and kind of sanitized it for the, the purpose of a demo, but it'll be able to get the, the main concept across. Uh, so you'll see for DCM, we have different, uh, different data sets. So there's activities, clicks, impressions, match tables, et cetera. Um, you can, oh, we're specifically looking at the activities, so what's happening within the, um, within the site. And here you can see a preview of the schema, details about the table, and then what that, the data actually looks like that's in that BigQuery table. So very nice. So you set up the new transfer, and once you, you know, choose where you want to place all that data that you've imported, you can view it from BigQuery uh, at a high level. You can see the schema details and do a quick preview. And then at this point, it looks like you're going to start building out your query. Yep. Actually, we're not going to build the query yet, because if you look at the data here in the preview, you can see the other data field is um, rather messy. Uh, so this is something that's actually very common across a lot of the ad solutions, um, particularly if you're joining as well across different ads products. So in the beginning, we had shown the example of HandyCo having both AdWords and DCM. Um, they both keep track of, of clients differently, for example, or um, have different definitions for kind of a similar concept. Um, so you might need to manipulate the data there as well to get a match across the two. Um, but specifically looking at DCM in this field of other data, we want to split out these key value pairs because if we don't, it's really hard to understand what's actually um, the data is telling us within this field. So because I, I know it a little bit here, um, it's trying to tell us that there are all of these different items in, um, in the shopping cart. Um, these are all the, the key value pairs here. Um, but we need, in order to understand what items are in which carts, how many of what items we have, et cetera, um, we need to split those out into separate columns, right? So, OK, this is really interesting. And it looks like that other data is kind of where the important stuff is. Um, what's Powerful Monkey? <laughs> you know, I think that's the uh, where I get to play the excuse of this is cleaned up data, and, and we just kind of made up a few things. So you'll see some weird things in here, like Powerful Monkey, um, Billowy Train. I think they're, they're meant to just be different products that you would come across. Um, but I mean, they could be, I don't know. Yeah, it would be whatever, like whatever in the, this example is the products of the, the Handy Co. online retailer. Um, just Got it. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I want it. <laughs> yeah, right? I really would like a dispensable volcano with a powerful monkey on a furry afternoon. You know, like <laughs> it doesn't really quite make sense, the data itself. Um, I think maybe perhaps we focus more on, on what we're actually doing with it, perhaps. But good question. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> cool. So also up here, it's able or worth noting that you can either query this table, copy it, you can export it out right now, you could delete it, whatever you'd like. Um, you could also compose a query up here on the left. But first, before we do that, we really want to clean up the other data. Um, so I've opened data prep, um, which you could also get to from the uh, menu as well. Um, I believe data prep is currently in beta, correct? Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> if you are interested in getting into that data. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. If you're interested in using it, let us know and, and we can work on that with you. Um, but here, uh, we'll show you how to clean up that data. So if we go to data sets and import, 
Uh, you see over here, you have three different options. So you can choose a file from, uh, from your desktop or laptop or wherever to upload. Um, if you have anything in GCS already, you can move from over there, or you could go from BigQuery uh, and then load data that's uh, stored there. So for example, we are looking at the DCM internal um, data set, and we want to pull up that one that we were looking at before. Um, takes a minute to load here. So the specific data set I want is actually from January. Um, don't mind that. It's just been a while since we've gone through and, and re-updated um, and pulled different data there. But you can see, for example, if I wipe out the month and the day, um, we've obviously been getting data since then. Uh, just, yeah. Anyway. Um, so over here on the right, you can see that we've added it, and we want to import and wrangle. So basically this means that we get to start, um, start messing with the data and transforming it a bit into what we want. So normally if you were to do this, um, you would end up writing probably quite a bit of Python scripting um, in order to clean up your data, or perhaps using a different ETL tool or something. but. Um, I'd be willing to bet that it would take a little bit longer for, for you to go through this process than what we're going to show here. Um, so essentially, we've just pulled in a sample of the, the data. Um, you can see here, sample one first, whatever. Um, but we can, at the end, we'll run against the whole, uh, the whole data set. Uh, along the top here are our different columns. And the colors point out where there are um, mismatched values. So that's saying that perhaps something in this field uh, doesn't match what everything else does. Um, and this is using a lot of um, machine learning technology on the back end to identify that. Um, since we're really just looking at the um, other data field, which is all the way over there somewhere, uh, we're gonna trim out um, a bunch of the other stuff. So down here in the bottom, um, there's a, uh, Builder or an editor that allows you to um, write the script for this. So for example, if I just wanted to drop one column, um, I could do it this way. Um, I could still continue to do it this way. Or I can transfer over to the editor and start to um, actually write it myself, uh, which I'm going to do so that I can drop uh, a whole collection of data sets so, or of columns. So that the squiggly line allows me to say, drop every column between event time and, um, I don't know, trend value. Trend value. <laughs> yeah, I think that's transaction value. There we go. <laughs> uh, so we'll add that to the recipe. And then you can see we've, we've cut it down so that we start at other data, but we still have a whole bunch of data after that that we don't really care about for this particular um, uh, example. So we're going to do the same thing here, but drop everything after. So say from that column on to the very end, um, which is something like billable cost for advertising currency. Uh, so then we'll drop all of that. And you can see here that we only have that one column, uh, which we got to pretty quick, right? Yeah. No, that's that really easy. Yeah, thanks. I practiced it over and over again, Jonathan. <laughs> so it looks like what you want to do here is with data prep is, you know, massage the data, do a little bit of ETL, even before you kind of put it back into BigQuery. I think there's probably yeah. several reasons why we want to clean it up. I mean, number one is probably you save money, right? You know, in terms of analysis and query, uh, going through all the data, cleaning up the columns. But I also noticed that it'll tell you if there's some kind of maybe misaligned data, you mentioned machine learning. Uh, is it going through these columns and, for example, it notices a bunch of numbers in all the rows and suddenly there's like a random letter in, in, you know, uh, in, in, in one of the rows and it says, oops, you know, that doesn't look right. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, it's looking for patterns. And so this next part here will actually be a good example of that as well to show you um, the different patterns that it's looking for and how it's developing uh, suggestions out of that. So just by highlighting the first key in one of those uh, key value pairs comes up with different suggestions here on the bottom uh, and a whole bunch of different ones because it, 
again, there's suggestions. It doesn't really know what I'm trying to do with the data, but it's coming up with different ideas. So, and that's all machine learning. So here it's saying, we want to extract, um, you know, both terms um, starting after a semicolon because that seems to be the delimiter of the different key value pairs, but coming before the equal sign, which is kind of the, uh, the separator of the pairs. Um, if that's what we want it to do, then we can click that, but you can see here that it's really only highlighting, um, or well, it's doing that upper and lower before and not grabbing the, the pair, right? Um, for this one, for example, it's just counting the number of times that that happened. And it's looking only for if the upper was eight characters and lower was five. I don't know where that went. There you go, right? Um, you can see these change here when you hover over the different options. Anyway, so these are all different, um, different suggestions that's being powered by machine learning. But as we highlight, for example, another option here, I might be confused because I clicked around. Let's try this again, sorry. There we go. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so let's say we highlighted Powerful House and I have a bad um, trackpad, so this <laughs> this is usually the fun part of the demo of um, my trackpad dragging around. Sorry, bear with me. If we highlight no problem. two different pairs or two different keys, um, you'll see the options down here start to change and are a little bit different. Um, so because we highlighted a powerful house and then a different but similar um, key that comes after the semicolon, but before an equal statement, right? But different words and different number of characters before and after the, the dash. Um, our answers down here are a little bit different. Uh, and so it starts to learn from, from what you're asking it. So all the way at the end here, we're going to, this is the suggestion that we want. We want to extract key value pairs um, from this column where, um, where the keys are before, before the equal statement, correct? So if we select that, it should give us a preview. Uh, no, sorry. Told you about my bad trackpad, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Demo gods aren't with us today. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. Nothing's broken on me yet. Um, just a wonky trackpad. Um, it'll give you a preview of what that uh, what that suggestion actually will do to your data before you run it. So, knowing that that's what we want to do in order to separate the key value pairs out, uh, we're going to click Add to Recipe, and now that allows us. Here we can see the JSON for it if we over here, you can see that they've been separated rather than just being um, one long string that we don't really know how to analyze in a SQL query. We now have key value pairs, right? But they're all still in the same column. So we didn't quite get there. So now if we click on the title of the column and wait for our suggestions to come up down here, it should ask me if I want to break it out into different columns, which is what I would like to do. There we go. Create 11 uh, new columns for all of the constants there. So you can see that it'll break them out into, um, into the different, a different column for each key. And add it to recipe. And now we have everything all split out. That's awesome. Pretty awesome. I have to say, um, I, have to say I, I was familiar enough with data prep to understand what you could do through the GUI and kind of create these, um, you know, kind of ETL jobs, but I didn't realize that there was this whole aspect of suggestions. I mean, I yeah. know we use the extract key value pair suggestion, but there's, there's a lot in there that's, um, again, kind of goes back to the narrative of helping people kind of do things a lot in a lot more nimble way as far as, you know, making the transformations that they need to with all of this messy and, and Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, and it does, like, it, 
it allows you to um, explore your data in a way that you might not have considered at the beginning or in a faster manner. Um, I did want to point out here as well that the gray is just showing that some of these um, values are missing. So perhaps the um, it's just a sparse data set, right? So down here you can see that, oh, sorry, um, that perhaps powerful vegetable actually was not listed in this row, right? And that's why it's not showing up there. So you do kind of have a, um, a quick like synopsis of what's going on with your data. Um, so this one has, again, 20 values that don't quite match for whatever reason. It might be because there's extra uh, numbers. So you can see here this, um, this value here has two less characters than the one above it. Um, perhaps that's the reason why it's showing up as a, a mismatched value. But anyway, we, we won't dive too much into that. because the, the point of this is to show you uh, what you could query in BigQuery, not exactly what's going on with powerful science and, I don't know, harsh mother, that's mean. <laughs> anyway, so. I have a way to that really just simplify how you edit and manage your data after you've imported, just to basically quickly adjust the data so that it fits your liking and allows you to do the, the query afterwards. Yeah. Definitely, and it, this was all done through a UI, um, obviously. I mean, you, you watched it by clicking on a few different buttons. Um, so clearly no Python or R scripting or anything like that uh, skills needed, which again, to your point earlier, really enables um, a marketing team to be able to do their, their own analysis. So after this point, we would run the job, and up here um, you can see that I can either uh, dump it into a GCS bucket, or I could dump it into a BigQuery table as well. Uh, I've already done that part just because I didn't want to be time restricted on, on what we were doing today. So a little bit of smoke and mirrors, but hopefully not too much. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue on if that's all right. Uh, here you can see that this is the process data that would have come out of this had I, had I click run. Um, and really in the back end of data prep, um, it's just a bunch of data flow jobs running. So um, that's a, another product of ours. I'm not sure if, if we've had a session on that yet, perhaps. Maybe that'll be one coming up soon. Um, yes, we have. But the benefit. Yeah. Just a shameless plug, uh, go check out data flow for mere mortals. Uh, David Wynn does a great job of explaining there that. There you go. I, yeah. What Deanna was saying is that, you know. Um, Sorry, I like the title. Catchy. Yeah, I know, right? I think it's uh, it's a common uh, theme amongst different yeah I mean tech titles yeah I mean GCP online meetup is really for mere myrtles as a whole <laughs> yeah in the right spot um, but yeah just, uh, data flow is just you know uh, again you'd be writing in Python or Java and really built for a lot a lot more complex transformation transformations so I think that <clears throat> there is still a clear use case for both and mm -hmm. um, you know uh, data flow has a lot more primitives is you're able to use it for batch and streaming. Data yeah. prep is is seems to be well, ETL or kind of ad hoc. Um, ad hoc yeah, it's quite a bit easier, um, in terms of the skills required for you to get going, right? Then data flow. At least that's my my take on it. For data scientists who maybe you know aren't super familiar with Java or Python and they want to just clean up their data before they do machine learning training. Mm -hmm. so just immediately when I saw the, the top of the column or the column titles and it's able to tell you, hey, you have some missing values here and there and uh, let you know that there might be some issues while you do some training, I think it's really powerful because data prep, I mean, all you do is you import the file and suddenly you have all this power to manipulate, edit, view, and just uh, quickly see if there's anything uh, missing in your data. Yeah, definitely. So back to BigQuery here so we can wrap up and leave some time for questions. Uh, this is the processed file here of, of what we've uh, manipulated and done. Um, so you'll see that it still has the whole table, but really what we've done is, is separate out that field at the end, right? So if we were to compose a query on this, um, I've already built one out over here so you don't have to watch me write SQL. 
uh, for a while. But you'll see all I did in the top was click Compose Query. And I have my SQL query here. Um, I'm essentially selecting three different, or two different products and counting um, how many carts they showed up in, right? Um, so I, I'm selecting and running that against the process data set and then grouping by that. Um, the green check here lets me know that I'm in good standing with BigQuery and that this query should run. Uh, and let's see, showing options. Um, we want to make sure just for the uh, whiz bang flash fun stuff of a demo that we are not using cached results um, just to show you really how fast BigQuery actually is. Uh, so we can click run and here it's going to go against and already finished running. So it was not um, a, whoops, sorry, there we go. It was not a uh, terribly long query to run all of two seconds or just under. Uh, but here you can see all of the different um, carts that have both of these items in them. Again, I don't really know what a lowly banana is, but apparently 2,000 people want them. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're missing out, guys. <laughs> Christmas list. Yeah. So here uh, we ran that query, which was great. We can save it out to Google Sheets. We can download it as a CSV or as JSON. Um, we could also build out a dashboard to uh, and be more interactive with it and to share that out with teams that perhaps don't want to log into a console like this and write, uh, write a query. So for example, we use Data Studio for this. Um, it's another Google uh, product. Um, Data Studio is free to use, but you can certainly use, um, if you have a, a BI uh, tool that you currently use, like Tableau, for example, um, that has a hook into BigQuery as well. Uh, and we can post all of the different partners in that ecosystem that, that leverage BigQuery uh, quite easily. But here, I have uh, never seen a dashboard look that nice in Data Studio. It's probably oh. my design skills. Yeah, I mean, that uh, looks a really nice graph. Well, Mine is usually just two yeah. bar charts with blue color and red color. <laughs> I think that might be reflective of how much time you put into creating that, <laughs> that chart there. <laughs> No, that looks really nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I have some customers using Data Studio, and they really like it because it's already integrated into BigQuery, uh, GCS, and uh, some of our other technologies. So it makes it really simple to visualize the data that you have. Yeah. Here you can see powered by BigQuery. Woo! -hoo! So we're not we're not making it up. Uh, in terms of let's say our initial problem statement, right? If we go way back to the beginning. Ah. Our problem statement was that there was a decrease in paint sales in California. Um, so just to circle back on that, if we want to look at California and then look at specifically paint sales, because right now this is across all of the different um, products that HandyCo sells. I don't know where Bill Louie Train is or any of that, but here you can see um, our sales and revenue, uh, and then the, the breakout and how that associates back to our different advertising solutions. Um, so surprisingly, there was a higher percentage of women than men buying paint in California. Uh, perhaps maybe we'll adjust our advertising campaign then to target more uh, females over males. Just a simple idea. Um, but here you can see and associate then back to your campaign. Um, so each campaign has a campaign ID how successful they were. And that's cool. that. So my wife buys three cans of paint and just uses one. Uh, she's yeah. supporting handy type. <laughs> I know. But I, I guess what you're doing is every time you click on a check button, is it going on the back end, querying BigQuery, and then spitting back results? Is it possible that a lot of these are cached so that the customer doesn't get charged each and every time? Yeah, um, with Data Studio, I believe it's cached. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that would explain why it's quick as well. Yeah, that, that would make sense. The fact that it's the results are coming up so quickly. I mean, BigQuery is really fast, but I think the results should be cached. Yes, so and, that, and with yeah. cached results, um, it gets for up to 24 hours. Definitely makes sense uh, if, if a team is running through this multiple times in a day. 
Yeah, but that is a good question. I would make sure uh, with whatever dashboarding solution you have built um, or integrated into BigQuery, how that, that works when you um, change the dashboard. Because my guess would be it might be different per, um, per solution. Definitely. Great. Well, that was, that was very meaningful to me. That was my first intro into AdWords, BigQuery, and Data Studio all in one. <laughs> sounds like we have a really good story there. I mean, I, I, I'm just as excited as anybody else. I can tell by by your voice, Jonathan. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There we go. <laughs> That's excitement. Our poor viewers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Deanna, thank every... you so much for for um, for joining us. And and again, this really was helpful. I think it. You know, this is something. Uh, this is a use case that probably resonates with a lot of people out there. Hopefully, the people that are watching live and the people that will, you know, uh, watch this meetup uh, over the course of the next few months. So, again, really thank, uh, thank you for coming out. And uh, any last words for the audience? Uh, anyone? <laughs> any? Uh, I don't know if anyone has catchphrases they want yeah, to throw I mean, in or yeah. life advice. Well, are, are, are you presenting next week? Uh, two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a shout out for what GKE versus App Engine Flex. Yeah. That's going to be a. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be a good fight. Or what is next week? That, that's me. I don't know. Uh, I have to check we, my schedule. We don't have one scheduled next week. Sadly. Oh, we don't. Oh, Deanna, Deanna, round two. <laughs> three next week. <laughs> Big query. We're back at it. <laughs> We're back at it. Round two. We might have to re record this. <laughs> <laughs> All of you out there, uh, thank you to Deanna. And, oh, sorry, what's that? Nothing. I was just saying thank you for having me and thank you to everyone that listened. Thank awesome. you very much. Oh, that's the worst catchphrase. <laughs>